Good morning. We're coming on just a couple minutes early um, because we wanted to make sure technically we're all okay so that we're ready to start um, right on time at um, 1030 this morning for our Easter worship. Happy Easter to all of you. Um, please let me know you're here. We think that we actually have it figured out that we can have um, comments in live time on um, YouTube. So if you're watching us from YouTube, please try and comment that way. Um, I have the thumbs up from my technical person that we are indeed broadcasting. And that is always a good feeling to know that I am not talking to just this camera all by myself. So um, welcome this morning. Um, we are trying something new. We're hoping that um, it's worked out with our, um, with our tests um, yesterday, numerous tests of having some music um, incorporated in with the service this morning. Um, and you will notice in your home devotional that there is a hymn in there. Um, we weren't sure if the other one would work, so that one has not been included. Um, but you can kind of guess what it might be by the suggestion that's in there. So we are still looking for some comments and we're still a minute or two out um, before we start. Um, as I look out my back window this morning, I see that there it is raining snow right now. Um, it looks like rain and snow combined coming down with how heavy it is and the grass is rapidly disappearing. So um, even though it might not seem Eastery this morning, it is indeed, indeed Easter. Um, Brian is, the Glazer family is tuning in on YouTube and we welcome them. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'll be clicking back and forth to check and see. Um, Barb Siegleff says he is risen, God bless. And indeed that is so. Um, so we are getting ready to join us and I thank you for both um, who commented because now I know that, that it's working on both streams. So let's um, begin as we light the Christ candle this morning. Though it might seem a little closer to um, uh, sunrise than what it normally is because of the level of light outside. So um, let's begin together. In the light of the first dawn, the women went to the graveside. Are not our hearts burning with hope all around, hope along with theirs? And there they found nothing. An empty tomb, a message from a stranger. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, 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 Amen. If you have your home devotional with you, um, I invite you to say with me the invitation to Easter worship this morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful Easter morning and we gather from afar to worship together as we are united in the risen Christ this morning. We are grateful for the gift of this new day and for the gift of coming together while we are distanced. We bring our whole selves to God this morning and are strengthened by God's love and presence. May this time be a blessing to all. Come. Let us worship God. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, which we have been following um, since, uh, since Jesus' birth uh, at Christmas time. And today we read the last chapter. I'm reading from Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. 
They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. I, I invite you to join me in our opening prayer. God of all times and places and circumstances, we gather as your people, joining hands with those who have gone before us, right back to those who stood along the road shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We celebrate this day in our hearts and meet Jesus here as the risen Christ. This day we meet and accept all. Bless us with your presence this day. In Christ's name, amen. I apologize, that is our Palm Sunday prayer, and uh, it also seems to fit today. Um, we come now to a time where we're going to try um, something very new. Um, I am going to play some music for you um, on YouTube, and I invite you to select uh, either verse two or verse three in the printed hymn that you have um, that is titled, uh, hang on a second, that is titled This Easter Celebration. Uh, this hymn was written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette this year for the specific use for uh, churches in the midst of um, our new way of worshiping. And uh, I could only find uh, a, an accompaniment online that had four verses. So the, although the hymn has five, I invite you and the people you may be watching with to choose which four verses you would like to, to sing together. some technical difficulties with our with our music this morning.
And now we get too much music. We come now to a time for the children in all of us. And I can see that um, the Barwicks are with us and um, we have um, some other added people, the Larsons, the Baumans, the Bijaks, uh, Susan Schultz, the Kunzies, Kathy Heller, um, Patty Seaman, Sally Barwick, and let's go to live stream here. Um, and uh, we're so glad that um, Brian and Brianna could join us, and Ronnie, um, and Andrew, and um, Brian let me know we can hear the music now. That's because we changed to a lower tech. We pulled the, the dongle out, sorry, of the cell phone, which was supposed to route it directly into um, into the, the soundboard, which we borrowed from church and we now have at home, um, to be able to create something new. And we tried it not even more than 15 minutes before uh, church started and everything was working fine. And then it wasn't when it was time to actually do that. So um, my technical advisor came running up from upstairs um, and that's when we switched to the lower tech version and far less better sound quality of going through the, um, going through just through my cell phone. Um, so welcome all the kids that are here this morning. I hope the Easter Bunny was good to you this morning. Um, and if you haven't done your Easter egg hunt outside already, um, you're probably going to have to um, uh, dig through the snow to find those eggs this morning. Um, it causes me to think that this very first Easter was a lot like the Easter that we are having today. Um, and it might seem strange to say that because that was over 2000 2000 years ago but at that point in time um, the disciples were kind of hiding in their homes they didn't know what was going on um, and they were all separate um, they had been um, following Jesus and understanding what was going on and then this horrible thing had happened to all of them in his death on Good Friday and so everybody was pretty confused and everybody was uncertain about how things were going to be and it seems to me that we're kind of in that stage today too a little confusion and a lot of uncertainty um, but what we do know is the very same way that God was with everyone at that point in time in Easter just like God is with us today and so we can be very comfortable and feeling much safer and loved because we know that God never abandons us and just like God never abandoned Jesus or his very first followers so if we could have a quick prayer I'm sorry I can't give you virtual snacks um, and I haven't figured out how to hide virtual Easter eggs um, but if you are looking for a virtual Easter egg hunt, I suggest you go to the Wisconsin Conference UCC website, wcucc.org, and they have an Easter egg hunt for you on their website that you can partake of this morning. So um, let's have a quick prayer. God, we thank you that you are with us no matter what and that you are closer to us than we can ever imagine. Amen. Um, we have a couple new um, messages. Um, Mark and Glenda Brown are celebrating new life with us and Easter blessings from the Druicks. And, um, and so I know that there are so many. Um, oh, and Jim and Barbara Anklum are joining us as well. I'm sorry, I almost missed that one. Um, we, we know that we are, although we are far apart, we are gathered together and we give thanks for that this morning. Um, we come now to a time of offering and I invite you 
Um, as many of you have done this past Sunday, and um, I can tell by because of when the mail shows up, um, who who has been participating in offerings on Sunday morning. I invite you to um, at some time today get a stamp, um, get an envelope, um, write Grace UCC on the top, 535 South Third Avenue, Wausau, Wisconsin. 54401 and share with us a part of what God has given you. The other way that you are also to able to share with us is go to the Give Plus app, which is available in the Apple Store or in the Play Store. Um, download it and search for Grace UCC in Wausau and um, click on that and you can um, give electronically um, recurring a one-time gift and hopefully by next week we will have a phone number that you can text your gifts to um, and that will be something that takes us into a whole new realm of technology as has all of this live streaming um, done the same thing for us um, we are so glad that you are able to join us this morning and I invite us to say our offering prayer together Living God, we believe that everything shall be made new again. We believe that your kingdom will come. We believe that you are not waiting, that your great work is already in progress. Let our offerings, our generosity, and our commitment be a part of the remaking and renewing of the world in your image. Amen. As I mentioned earlier um, in, my, um, in our introduction, we've been following um, the Gospel of Mark um, this spring. And um, Mark is always written in a very immediate manner and very quickly um, and without a lot of flowery language or the extra stories or the theological reflection that the other Gospels have. Um, there is um, an immediacy about the way this story is told today in Mark. And the, the original gospel ended just with where I shared um, this morning, with the women fleeing in amazement and in terror. Um, now, obviously, they told somebody, or it wouldn't have continued on and we would not be sitting here this morning and joining with Christians around the world in celebrating this Easter day in a new and different way. So they obviously told somebody, but the way that Mark's gospel ends is very quick and very sudden. And in Mark, we never see the risen Christ. We never see an encounter um, Jesus on the road to Galilee, those stories come in Matthew's and Luke's and John's version. And so it's a different place and a different understanding for us because this is not the one that we commonly remember for Easter morning. So although because this was such a short and abrupt ending, there were two attempts made to add um, alternative endings to the Gospel of Mark. And if you look in your Bible, you will see there's a shorter ending, a very short one or two sentences that just says, and all things were good and Jesus returned and, and that's the end of the story. We're good with that. And then there's a longer ending that shows up that's much more intricate and was written in about the second century of BC, or not BC, um, CE, Common Era. And that one, we can tell that it wasn't written at the same time because the words and the, the way that the Greek was used in that ending versus the way that Mark originally ended are very, very different. And so people a lot smarter than me have figured out that that is the case. And um, so that whole piece helps us understand that Mark ended 
with the women fleeing. Now, today might seem like that confusion and that terror and amazement um, led to a time of great discernment. Um, it was after that that the message started spreading. It was after that where they had a chance to review and understand and digest what was going on that Jesus' followers had some time and some way to move forward. And in that way, I think our Easter this year is very similar to that for very first Easter. In our time of, of physical distancing, not social or spiritual distancing, the church is proving that. In our time of physical distancing, what we're understanding is that we have a chance and an opportunity to step back and look at what things are just and merciful and working in our world today and what things are not. And we have the chance as we reemerge, as we re-enter and leave our homes and begin working and interacting in society again. We have an opportunity that they had that same day, that same Easter day. We have the opportunity to find ways to look at, uh, at alleviating injustice. We have ways and, and perspectives to look at correcting systems that may not be working for everyone in this world, that may hurt our minimum wage workers and our marginalized people in the world. We have an ability to, um, to move in a new direction, to keep the good things, and to find ways of fixing and creating new solutions and move into the future. And so we believe, we believe that, that we are an Easter people. We have always understood resurrection. We've always understood that wonderful chance at do-overs that God gives us at all times. We understand that moving forward and being an Easter people means finding new life and finding new ways of having, giving life and growing. We are, we believe because we are an Easter people. We believe, we understand that so often in life, a habit or a thing or an addiction or a way of understanding has to die and has to leave so that we can move on and growth and transformation can happen. And in our society, we are in that same place right now. We are at a place of great opportunity and great resurrection. And I invite us as we come forward in our world today to look for the places of hope, to do as Mr. Rogers' mother taught him so long ago, to look for the places where people are helping because in those places we will see the face of God. We believe because we know our soul, in our souls that love is so much stronger than death. Easter is a day and a time and a season where we celebrate all of that. We celebrate the love of God that nothing can separate us from that love. Easter is the day we as Christians claim that death is conquered, that love reigns now and forever, no matter what, and no additional endings are necessary. Alleluia, amen, and thanks be to God. We come now to a time of prayer and we give um, thanks for our opportunities to share in, in, our, in our common worship together. We give thanks that even when we are separated physically like this and sheltered in our own homes, 
that we can still see the risen Christ together this Easter morning. So I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. I invite you to take a deep breath, to sit back in your chair, to relax, to know that God is with you, to know that there is nothing, not even death, that can separate you from the love and the care of God and Jesus. And let us pray. Gracious God, risen Christ and abundant spirit. As we take a deep breath this morning, we thank you that while we are separated by distance, we are not separated in our spiritual beliefs together. We see and understand that you work in such mysterious and wondrous ways in our world, even today. We understand and know deep in our souls this morning that resurrection and new life is possible, even though it's snowing, even though we are far apart physically, even though we cannot see our way forward, we know that you are with us no matter what, and you will never, ever abandon us. We thank you that in this risen Christ, we see a new way and a new path forward. May the love of Christ and the wholeness of life in Christ envelop us this day. We pray for the medical workers in our community and around the world. We pray for all those who support their efforts. We pray for the people transporting, growing, and stocking our shelves, that they may be safe from this virus. We pray for those first responders who continue to do their job fearlessly, maybe with fear, but with great courage. We pray for all those for whom loneliness and boredom is a challenge in these days. May they know that in you they are never alone, and in you they may find and, and receive great joy and redeeming hope and love. We ask you to be with us in our challenges, in our fears, in our joys, and we ask that you help us see the risen Christ in a new and glorious way. And we pray together this morning, as Jesus taught us so long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to share just a couple more um, announcements with you today. Um, Grace United Church of Christ is now a drop-off spot for the Wisconsin Face Mask Warriors um, sewing project. Um, in the back, under the overhang, um, there is a, a small gray box with an orange lid and some bungee cords to hold the lid on in case it gets windy. Um, and they are accepting donations of fabric or anything else that would be useful in making masks. Um, that includes new hockey skates, laces, not the skates, the laces, um, because they are extra long and they can be used um, for tying. Any kind of uh, wire that could be bent and used for, um, for to pinch over a nose bridge. Um, elastic, quarter inch, eighth inch, if you have old bungee cords, these can be stripped and opened up, and on the inside there's a, a whole lot of elastic pieces that can be used as elastic cording in there, um, and any kind of fabric that you think would be appropriate. Um, 
please drop that off whenever you would like. Um, and uh, if you are interested in sewing, um, please uh, either um, text uh, through the live broadcast or um, and I'll um, message you personally the information of our contact person here in Wausau. Michaela has been wonderful to deal with over the phone and I look forward to meeting her in person someday. Um, this is a project uh, that will give free face masks to um, healthcare workers, uh, nursing homes, um, first responders, anyone else who is in need of having a mask at this time. Um, and Grace United Church of Christ is privileged to be able to partner with this wonderful organization. Our little food pantry is still active out in front of the church. Um, you are welcome to drop off donations at any point in time. Um, just drive up on 3rd Avenue, um, open the cabinet, and if there's room, um, place your items in there. Um, periodically, um, staff and, um, and certain people who uh, have uh, keys will be going in to refill the diapers and make sure other things are available. Um, we do accept um, donations if you are interested in um, sharing a cash donation so that we can actually do some shopping and stock the pantry from what is inside the church. We are also able to do that. Um, we are working, our, our donations from before, from our winter, are pretty much down to getting close to uh, very little. We are, however, transitioning to canned goods, and we've had a number of canned goods come in over the winter, um, so we will be able to start stocking the pantry with those things. Um, we do have a number of people who are regularly sharing um, baked goods um, with uh, store-bought baked goods that are day-old that have been picked up um, and shared in the pantry, and we are thankful for that um, as well. So. Um, there are still ways where we can reach out and be the church in the, in the world besides our um, webcasts and our Facebook casts and our YouTube streaming. Um, we are still on um, uh, uh, public access and I will be sharing this information with them immediately following the service. Um, so we have worshipers um, from California um, we welcome uh, Dean and Leilani. Um, uh, we have some messages going back and forth. Uh, Melissa Taylor is joining us from Iowa. Um, welcome. And I think that's all. I'm going to check YouTube real quick. Um, Doug and Edie Peterson wish everyone a happy birthday. Um, and uh, I invite you to continue your discussions and your wishes of happy Easter for everyone um, beyond the, the time that we are here together. Um, Patty Seaman shared a wonderful reminder for the pantry. Um, please no homemade food um, and don't break down items to put them in smaller packages um, like breaking down cereal into Ziploc bags. Everything has to be in its original packaging. Um, this is for health department reasons as well as for um, uh, mitigating spread of virus. So it's just very important that everything be in original packaging. Thank you for the reminder, Patty. I appreciate that so much. Um, we are an Easter people and happy Easter to each and every one of you this morning. And um, we are blessed that you are are with us. Um, I'm just going to check our likes real quickly. As you might also have joined us this morning. Um, and Janelle and Marlis um, are with us, and at, um, Andrew and Deb. And so we are glad you could join us this morning. Um, we're coming now to a time uh, where we will share our last hymn. And um, even though it worked this morning with the more technical way, I am um, 
going to go to a little bit more of uh, a low-tech way that we make sure that that is, is working. We will be listening to a recording from 2017 of Christ the Lord is Risen Today um, from the Grace Community Church in California. Nice to hear beautiful music on a day like today. And now let us join together in our closing prayer. If you have it in front of you, I invite you to speak this out loud. And now into God's world we go, whether physically distanced or lovingly masked to protect others. We go to continue our walk with Christ in all the places life calls us to be, to be spiritually and socially present in the world. Let us go forth in joy, for God calls us to share God's work. Let us go with purpose, 
for God equips us for the work to which we are called. Let us go with hope, for God will show us the places where we are, need, are most needed. Let us go with peace and love, for with God there is enough for all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. May you know the risen Christ this day and always. Happy, happy Easter. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. Um, one note, um, I would like to share congratulations to a new set of grandparents. Uh, Doug and Edie had two little twin boys that were born about two or three weeks ago who I understand are doing quite well and getting much bigger, um, Nash and Sawyer. And we are so glad that they are here and they're safe and they're healthy. Um, I invite us to um, use a little bit of extra social time at the end here um, and share your comments with one another. Um, I'm going to leave the stream open for a minute or two so that you can do that. Um, and uh, um, we will see how, how that works. Um, so happy Easter to you all. Oh, there's a few more announcements on um, on YouTube. Um, Carol and Conrad say hello. Um, and Doug and Edie are grandparents to twin boys, um, which we just shared. Um, uh, the Schultzes are joining us. Um, and Doug says Sawyer is now Sawyer David is now four pounds, 11 ounces, and Nash Douglas is five pounds, three ounces, and arrived home on Thursday. Everyone is doing well. Um, so I'm so glad that Nash is home, and um, my guess is Sawyer will be soon. Um, and on Easter, we celebrate new life. So we are thrilled that that has happened. Um, and let me see if there are any other things coming through on Facebook. Um, it's uh, because the people on Facebook can't see the comments on YouTube and YouTube can't see the comments on Facebook. So um, we are looking at seeing if we can get uh, some type of program together so that we can um, share um, information and messages back and forth. Um, uh, the Petersons say thanks to everyone for your thoughts and prayers during Avery's pregnancy. Um, Margaret Schultz says happy Easter to you Reverend Julie and thank you for the beautiful service and music. And oh, and both of the babies are home now so that's even better news. Um, so, wonderful. Um, uh, the Bauman's share they're doing a Zoom Easter dinner with their kids later. Um, so I'm curious to find out how that works for everybody. Um, Andrew says, Happy Easter to you all. Um, please call me AM as Easter is a, as AM is an Easter person. Ah, thank you, A.M. I will do that from now on. Um, and um, we are happy that you could join us this morning, so thank you. Um, it's so nice to see your other things. Um, and Ronnie, Ronnie Smith shares she's excited that Easter is here, and I am too. I think we're ready for spring, and we're ready for a time of renewal and a time of great joy. And um, happy Easter to you all. 
And with that, I am going to close our live streams. May you be blessed this Easter Sunday, and may you know God, the risen Christ, in all of your, in all of your, in all areas of your life. Blessings to you all.